The ability to improv can be very useful in the business environment. Bob, as somebody who has a background in comedic improvisation, how have you seen this translate into a usable business skill? All right, well, over the last 19 years, I've been extracting the tenets of improvisation that would be used to produce the outcome of comedy and then redirecting them to business. So it's useful in business in very personal things like eye contact, focus, communication, listening to each other, adapting to each other, collaboration, and the list will go on and on and on. And I was looking in your eyes and listening to everything that you just said. By and I the way. felt that. I felt connected. I thought you did. I hope our <laughs> audience felt connected. So tell me, what are some very specific like, ways that people can develop this improv skill? All right. Well, first, it's practice. That, there's nothing that beats practice. Anything that you have to do in real time is, is more like riding the bike. So it's the first round might be a little awkward. The 500th round, though, you might be hands-free and, and able to use it as a, a medium from, you know, from one point to another point. So other than that, I would focus on yes and. Yes and is the cornerstone of all improvisation, wherein yes is unconditional acceptance. You give me a gift, an offer, an opportunity, anything. It could be physical or verbal. I accept it at face value. And then is the bridge to how you accept it. And is the bridge to your focus and your concentration and your intelligence and your passion. So and is really the bridge to you. Yes, I see what you're saying. And what else she could... Used yes and. Do, do you see what I did there? I listened. Mm -hmm. And then I used <laughs> that skill. Where might they do this in the business setting? Like, what's the best situation? Is it meeting with bosses? Is it meeting with clients? A yes. larger meeting? And yes, and yes. So we'll reverse this, okay? So in a larger setting, you can use yes and as a collaboration tool, a brainstorming tool, an ideation tool, a way to actually analyze things and you look at things from different angles. It won't change the bowl of fruit in the middle of the table, and it just allows you to buzz around it from different angles and make sure that you are getting the clearest perspective of it. If you are communicating either up or down or across or even with clients, it's a way to build relationships because what yes and does is slow the brain down and it forces you to be present and in the moment at a very high level just simply to hear what somebody else is saying and respond to them so it keeps us from falling into the common human communication pitfall of disengaging and thinking about what we're going to say next or drifting off into space on anything else and really forces you to be present and in the moment at a high level which of course links to presence as I just mentioned and mindfulness Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are some areas where we want to use improv, and you listed a whole bunch of them. Are there any areas where you don't want to use improv? You probably don't want to improvise around numbers as they relate to taxes. <laughs> I would think that that could get you in trouble. Our, I hope our members know that, but yes, very good point. <laughs> I, I would also say as well, you know, it, it, the old Eisenhower quote of plans are everything, uh, planning is everything and plans are useless rather. I reversed that there. Planning is everything, plans are useless. So it's important to get the strategy in place, it's important to get the contingency plans in place and then improvisation actually thrives at the pivotal moment where planning and strategy meets execution. So it's right there. So you do your legwork, you do your homework, you assemble your teams, you get everything in place foundationally, and then once it's time to execute, then you put the improv back in. Okay, so you gave us the yes and strategy. We know where to use it, where not to use it. Do you have any other like actionable skills that people can take back and be like, all right, this is what I'm going to do this afternoon. This is uh, how I'm going to work on improv. Okay, so energy and attitude are choices. Energy and attitude are choices. So the energy that you bring, if you're low energy, do something about it. Get yourself a little more pumped up. If you're attitude, attitude is not in the right place, take a minute or two and get in the right headspace. So most people actually check the weather more often than we check our own energy and attitude. So think about this, this endless winter, this Game of Thrones winter that we, that's been upon us. How many times a week or a day have, did you check the weather? Well, it's raining today and I had to straighten my hair for this video, so I definitely checked it multiple times. Okay, so this is a great example of adapting to something outside of our control, the weather. You check the weather, you knew it was raining, so you bet you probably got an umbrella and you I didn't plan that far ahead. No, no, you just ran down <laughs> the rain like freedom. If you run uh, quickly, it's fine. Yeah, just <laughs> move in between the raindrops. That, that's true enough. Uh, I did check the weather and I did get an umbrella. So uh, because it was improv and planning. Yes, yes. So <laughs> think about this now with your your attitude and your energy. If you are low energy, why not do something about it and adapt to it the same way you would the weather? Same thing with your attitude. If you're not in the right headspace, think what athletes do before competitions. You know, they're not shooting out 20 emails and then running <laughs> out on the court and like, I'm ready to play. 
They are focusing and concentrating, reviewing their game plans, visualizing their opponents, talking to each other, you know, getting in the zone with each other. And that's something easy that we can do before an engagement, before an important conversation, before a meeting. If we're not physically and mentally in the right place to play the game, then do something about it. Put it back in your control. And this energy and attitude thing doesn't have to be like, yeah, you know, big Muppet energy. It could be something simple like a smile and eye contact, deliberately making choices. <laughs> <laughs> One area that I can think that this would be useful for me is when you're sitting in a boardroom or in a meeting with a whole lot of people and you get called on unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. Is this a good place for yes and, but what else might somebody do when you're like, I don't have this material, I'm not prepared, how can improv help here? All right, so improvisation, what we call for is everyone just to relax a little bit and mentally get out of our own way. So we let our natural intelligence come to the surface. Now, this does not mean overextending yourself, and it does not mean BSing in any capacity. So we don't want to lie and dig ourselves into a, a hole and say, oh, yeah, overextend ourselves in, in, on an answer that doesn't really exist. What we look to do, though, is see if we can find that answer. And if we can't, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't have that answer right now. I'll get back to you within the hour or by the end of the day with something solid. Very good advice, and that's something that I like to use a lot as well. It's a good parachute. It really is a good parachute. I don't know, but I will find out. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other parachutes? Uh, well, honesty, really. And showing excitement, showing passion about something as well. It's something that I don't think a lot of people do, that they're just like, yeah, okay, well, I'll <laughs> go ahead and do that thing. Instead of like, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll take that on. And yeah. that will inspire other people. You know, energy begets energy. It doesn't take much for it to become contagious. And yeah. so the question isn't, is energy really contagious? The question is, which direction do you want that energy to go? Down, like suffocating things with a wet blanket, or up? So do you have any examples of stories where improv has really helped a client or somebody in the business environment? Give us a concrete example. A concrete example of something that I've seen yep. or some, a concrete example that everybody in the world has seen? <gasps> Give us both. Okay, well, think of uh, the Bin Laden raid and the helicopter going down. They Black had to actually, dark. yeah, forget to talk very quickly. They had to <laughs> scramble in, in order to make it happen. That was all based in planning, though. It was all based in execution. You know, Tom Brady is known to be improvisational at the line. So whether you like him or not, the truth is he's pretty adaptable. In organizations, though, I've seen improvisation really help in strategy because what improvisation does, it bounces between divergent thinking and convergent thinking, where in divergent thinking is the exploration of ideas. It's about the sheer number of ideas. It's really taking a good look at it. And convergent thinking then is cleaning up that mess that you just created on the divergent side and moving it to a productive outcome. So you can use yes and and energy manipulation, focus, concentration, et cetera, in both sections of this to actually put a strategy in place where and then you'll have to improvise to make it work because improv is that intersection of strategy and execution. All right, so if you had any other tips, final takeaways for our viewers, what would it be? I, I would say, can I plug my book? Is that something I can do? Well, I mean, you kind of just did by saying that, so go right ahead. Okay, <laughs> uh, here's a tip. By getting to yes and the art of business improv, it's prescriptive, it's underpinned in all the behavioral sciences, so I really study how and why people make decisions in real time. Other than that, I would say try. These are fail-safe techniques. You can start yes-anding anyone, making eye contact with anyone, and most people are not going to catch you. And if they do catch you, it's because they took an improv workshop. So they're going to be like, all right, let's do this thing. Let's yeah. have some fun. We're friends. We got it. We're on the same right, team. We got it. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you guys all for tuning in. Make sure to watch future episodes of the Human Intelligence series. And we look forward to seeing you in the future.